Hi guys, this video is about tympanoplasty. Welcome to Med with Med Simple. If you are new to my channel, I'd highly recommend you to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it so that you can keep watching all my upcoming videos for free. So we all know about chronic arthritis media. I've already made a video uh, explaining about chronic separated arthritis media in detail and I also made a separate video on cholesteatoma. So the links of those videos will be provided in the end of this video, so keep watching. So chronic arthritis media is chronic inflammation of the middle ear associated with a permanent perforation in the tympanic membrane with ear discharge. We all know about this, okay, so just revising and chronic arthritis media with perforation of the tympanic membrane can cause conductive hearing loss. So to correct the perforation of the tympanic membrane, various grafts such as temporal aspasia graft, trigus perichondrium and fat can be used. The most commonly used graft for correcting the perforation of the tympanic membrane is the temporal aspasia graft. You need to remember that, okay? So what is myringoplasty? Myringoplasty is closure of perforation of past tensa of the tympanic membrane. So what's the basis of doing a uh, myringoplasty? So let us uh, understand what happens in the perforation of tympanic membrane. If there's a perforation in the tympanic membrane, first of all, the person won't be able to hear normally because there will be conductive hearing loss because of the perforation. The sound waves cannot be conducted uh, normally uh, as happens in uh, an intact tympanic membrane. Okay, so the person will have conductive hearing loss and in addition to that, because of the presence of perforation in the tympanic membrane, uh, various pathogens can enter from the external artery canal into the middle ear, so the person can have recurrent middle ear infections. Okay, so the uh, so that's why we do uh, myringoplasty to correct the, uh, the to close the perforation of the past tense of tympanic membrane, so the person will be able to hear normally and recurrent middle ear infections can be avoided. So that is about myringoplasty. So what is tympanoplasty? How is it different from myringoplasty? Uh, so let me explain this in this way, okay? So if the person has only perforation of tympanic membrane, it can be covered with the help of a graft. As I've told you, the most commonly used graft is temporal aspasia graft. We can cover the perforation with temporal aspasia graft. But if the person, in addition to having a perforation in the tympanic membrane, also has damaged or necrosed ossic ear ossicles, uh, what can happen is, if we just correct the perforation of the tympanic membrane and if the person has uh, damaged ear ossicles, there's no point in correcting the, uh, the, the tympanic membrane because the ear ossicles are not, uh, are not all right, okay? So they, they won't be able to conduct the sound, okay? So that's why we need to uh, do ossicular reconstruction in addition to doing um, myringoplasty, okay? So that is what is known as tympanoplasty. So remember that tympanoplasty is myringoplasty plus ossiculoplasty, which is ossicular reconstruction. Okay, so this uh, is what is the difference between tympanoplasty and myringoplasty. I hope uh, you understood this. Okay, so if you still uh, didn't understand, uh, if you still couldn't get the concept uh, behind tympanoplasty and myringoplasty, please make sure to comment below. I'll try to clarify your doubts okay, as soon as possible. So we'll still classify tympanoplasty into five types, okay? So there are five types of tympanoplasty. So the first type, uh, the type 1 tympanoplasty can be uh, interchangeably uh, called as myringoplasty, okay? So although in some literature it is mentioned that type 1 tympanoplasty um, is uh, almost, uh, is 100% is not the uh, same as myringoplasty, okay? So there are subtle differences between type 1 tympanoplasty and myringoplasty. Myringoplasty is when you just co uh, correct the defect or perforation of the tympanic membrane whereas type 1 tympanoplasty is when you correct the in addition to correcting the perforation of the tympanic membrane you will check the ossicular integrity and make sure that uh, the ear ossicles are not damaged okay so that is type 1 tympanoplasty if we are going to do type 1 tympanoplasty the ear ossicles should be normal so as you can see in this picture uh, all the three ear ossicles, malleus, incus, and stapes are normal. So we can just place the graft over the malleus. So uh, this is what is known as type 1 tympanoplasty. Uh, for our level, we can use it interchangeably with myringoplasty, although uh, some people won't prefer um, to consider it as myringoplasty. So type 2 tympanoplasty. What is type 2 tympanoplasty? Okay. In type 1, we had uh, all the ear ossicles are normal like we had malleus incus and stapes which were normal 
but in type 2 tympanoplasty the malleus is eroded or damaged okay so it, it uh, we can have a partially present malleus okay so partially the malleus is destroyed or the malleus is completely destroyed okay so we may have uh, just incus and stapes uh, left behind okay so in this condition we should place the graft over the remaining malleus if the malleus is partially present or if the malleus is completely damaged we can place the graft over the incus okay so this is very easy to uh, understand and remember nothing complicated here so this is about type 2 tympanoplasty now type 3 tympanoplasty is when the malleus is gone and the incus is also gone okay so we just have stay piece left behind so what's what are we going to do here is that we are going to place the graft on the remaining part which is the stay piece the head of the stay piece okay so this is known as type 3 tympanoplasty uh, the type 3 tympanoplasty is also known as columella tympanoplasty you just have to remember that and uh, it is also known as myringostapidiopexy uh, because we are placing the graft over the stay piece okay so that is about type 3 tympanoplasty and one more interesting point is that type 3 tympanoplasty is one of the commonly done tympanoplasties. Uh, that, that is because uh, of the three ear ossicles which are present in the middle ear, the incus is the one which is more prone to undergo necrosis. Okay, so since the incus is more prone to undergo necrosis, uh, what can happen is the patients are more, are more prone to lose malleus as well as the incus. Okay, so incus will be lost. So we'll have to place the graft on the remaining bone which is tapis. Okay, so it is one of the commonly done uh, tympanoplasties. Okay, so just remember that the incus is one of the uh, the incus is the incus is the ear ossicle which is more prone to undergo necrosis. So type 4 tympanoplasty. Here even the stapis is gone. Only the foot plate of stapis is remaining. But the but remember that in this condition the foot plate of stapis is not fixed. Okay, so it it still can conduct sound. Okay, so in this condition what we are going to do is that we will place the graft between the oval window and the round window, as you can see in this picture. So what happens here is that the, the middle ear cavity is only this part. Okay, so middle ear cavity becomes very narrow, and the sound which is coming from the external auditory canal it falls straight on the oval window okay so imagine if there is if, imagine this picture without this graft okay so if sound waves are coming just like that it will fall on oval window as well as round window simultaneously so if that is happening there will be uh, cancelling of both the sounds and the person won't be able to hear but if you place the graft like this the round window is shielded here okay so the sound waves will fall only on the oval window that is on the foot plate of the stay piece and so there will be phase differential and the person will be able to hear this is uh, the advantage of type 4 tympanoplasty in which the person has lost malleus, incus and stapes only the foot plate of stapes is remaining and it is not fixed okay remember that the foot plate of stapes is not fixed okay that's where you can do type 4 tympanoplasty now type 5 tympanoplasty is when the foot plate of stapes is remaining but the foot plate of stapes is fixed okay which means it won't be able to conduct sound anymore so what are we going to do here is that will create a fenestrum in the fenestrum which means a hole in the semicircular canal okay so since we are creating a hole in the semicircular canal uh, which is a fenestrum this operation is also known as fenestrum fenestration operation okay so type 5 tympanoplasty is also known as fenestration operation so uh, remember that it is done if the foot plate of stapes is fixed okay so there is a risk of uh, the patient developing vertigo on a long term okay so that's why this operation is not done commonly these days. Since we are um, creating a hole in the semicircular canal, um, the person has risk of developing vertigo. That's the reason. Okay, and if, uh, as you all know, there's a test known as fistula test. Okay, so I'm not uh, going to explain about that in this video. So I want to keep this video short. So just remember that uh, fistula test will be positive for patients um, who, um, for, who for whom type five tympanoplasty is done. Okay. So that's about the types of tympanoplasty. Now, just uh, for completion's sake, I'll try to simplify the overlay versus the underlay myringoplasty techniques. Okay, so just try to uh, understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, um, I I I'll make sure to uh, simplify the concepts. So first, the anesthesia, which is uh, under which this uh, is done, um, is local or generalized anesthesia. Um, so either uh, is okay okay so we can do it under general as well as local anesthesia 
and the position of the patient uh, should be supine okay they should be lying supine with face turned up to one side the ear in which we're going to operate is the one which is going to be facing upwards so first uh, i'll explain about the overlay technique it's very easy nothing complicated okay first of all let me make this point clear um, how to remember what is overlay is that you will place the graft over the uh, tympan uh, over the uh, annulus okay so rem if, uh, imagine if the person is lying or like this okay the head is over here and you're seeing the external artery canal from above okay so you're seeing the external artery canal and this is the middle ear cavity you're coming from the external artery canal to the middle ear cavity you see the uh, annulus okay the annulus is present over here you are placing the graft over the annulus okay so over the annulus that's why this technique is known as overlay technique okay this is overlay technique um, the overlay type of myringoplasty uh, for overlay technique only the skin flap uh, has to be raised as we all know there are three layers of tympanic membrane okay the outermost layer which is the skin uh, epithelial layer um, is the only layer which has to be raised for overlay technique okay and the graft is placed over the annulus so that is about overlay technique so it's very easy to uh, remember now about the underlay technique uh, we have to uh, apart from raising the skin flap we also have to raise the tympanomiatal flap and the graft is placed under the annulus see here in this picture the annulus is over here and we're placing the graft under the annulus okay so that is why this procedure is known as under the uh, underlay technique so uh, let me make this clear once again okay if you are placing the graft over the annulus it is known as overlay technique if you are placing the graft under the annulus it is known as underlay technique nothing else okay it's very simple to understand now let's talk about some complications of the overlay and underlay techniques let's uh, first uh, talk about the complications of overlay technique There'll be blunting of anterior sulcus. Okay, the anterior sulcus may become um, narrow. The, sorry, the uh, the anterior sulcus may become blunted. That can happen, and there can be epithelial pearls or epithel uh, epidermal cysts, uh, which are epidermal cysts, which can form, and uh, the graft can undergo lateralization and separation uh, because we're just keeping it over the uh, annulus. Okay, so these are some of the complications. So and. Uh, the complications of underlay technique are even more easy to remember um, since we are placing the graft under the uh, annulus we are further narrowing the middle ear cavity so the middle ear may become narrow and uh, the graft is placed uh, so close to the middle ear structures so the graft may get other end to the promontory and uh, one more thing can happen anteriorly the graft may lose contact from the remnant of the tympanic membrane so a, a new perforation can form anteriorly because of this uh, separation okay so see these are some complications of uh, overlay and underlay techniques of myringoplasty i hope you understood um, the concepts which i've explained in this video uh, since uh, these are some of the surgeries which are most commonly asked in our ent exams i thought i'll make a separate video on this so if you like this video you can uh, support my work by donating on www.patreon.com slash medbits made simple so that i can make more videos for you so the remaining topics i'll be making uh, uh, very soon okay so and don't forget to check out the amazon affiliate links which i mentioned in the description of this video if you guys make any purchase after clicking the link uh, in the description i'll get a part of it as commission so it will be indirectly helping my channel and also don't forget to check out the merch, the links are in the description. So thank you so much for watching this video till the end. Uh, if you guys have any doubts or if you guys want, me, want to ask me anything, uh, feel free to uh, mention them in the comment section below. And uh, as always, uh, stay tuned for my next video. I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.